Hi everyone. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about some general tips for designing prompts. So I've been designing and optimizing some prompts for uh, various use cases for a variety of clients from different domains, ranging from uh, health providers all the way to uh, companies building HR solutions. And what I want to share here is a few tips and things to keep in mind as you design your prompt. We know that the process of designing prompts is very iterative in nature. So when you're designing a prompt for a language model, you need to start very simple. One error and mistake that I see a lot of developers and users make is they get pretty clever and they want to ask the model to do a variety of things and they prompt the model, they don't get the results, they give up, they get discouraged based on what the language models are producing. And the reason for that is that that's not the right uh, framework or the right strategy to design good prompts. The right way to do this is really to start simple, right? Start with a very basic task. Also, if you have a very complex task, it might help to break down the task into separate subtasks. Because it could be the case that the model, you know, it's not capable enough to handle all the instructions that you're giving the model to perform. So that's why it's really important to always start really simple, right? To get the model to do something really well and optimize the model to perform that task. And it's important to keep the instructions, uh, keep the prompt really simple. The next step here is really the instruction. So we spoke about the prompt elements. And one thing we mentioned there is that we need to specify an instruction, right? What do we want the model to perform? What is the task the model needs to perform, whether it's a classification task, summarization, translation. So it's important to think about what exactly this model is going to achieve and to use the right verbs or the right words to describe that task, right? So it's important to identify that when you're working on your use cases. So let's say we were to create some type of translation system. Um, here is an example here at the bottom. Let's say we wanted to uh, build some kind of you know, translation system that converts uh, text into Spanish, right? So English text to Spanish. To do that, it's, you know, you just instruct the model, translate the text below to Spanish, and then you pass in the text. We're using text as the input indicator, and the input is going to be hello. And once we pass it to the model, the model is going to understand, okay, this is a translation task because I'm using the keyword here is translate. The more clear and the more specific you know, the wording for that instruction is the better results you're going to get, right? So try to avoid ambiguous language, try to avoid, you know, using words that the, the model might not know of, right? So the simpler the words are, the more specific are, the better the results are going to be, okay? And we, we can try this, actually. Um, so for this prompt, we don't really need instruction. You can add the instruction part, but you will see here that with modern interfaces like the one provided by the OpenAI Playground, <clears throat> we can basically just write the task that we want to perform. And then we can take, for instance, we can take this. Uh, in fact, I'll just leave it as is, and then I'll show you another version that uses the user role. So you can see that we got all that, right? So we, we got the right translation here. Now, I can also do something like this. And this is something I showed in a previous tutorial. So I can take this, remove this, and then I can use the user role to provide my input that I want to translate to Spanish. And then I can submit this. Right, and we got all that here. So, so we got the right translation. So that's how you would you would you would think about the instruction, right? Try to make the instruction as clear and concise as possible. Now, there's also a lot of recommendations. You know, if you go online, a lot of conversations about how to design prompts. And one of the main tips that come up is specificity. Re really be very specific about what you want, right? So for some use cases, you want, for instance, you want a specific format, you want a specific tone. It's important to think about what exactly do you want from this model, right? The model cannot really guess it. 
The model has an understanding of what it was trained on, but in order for you to get the, prefer the, get the performance or get the results that you want or a specific output that you want, you need to be as specific as possible. So I have an example here. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just take this over again here and I'll show you how uh, you can play around with this in the playground. So I have here extract the name of places in the following text. Now, the desired format, I need to change this a bit. I, I could keep it the way it was, but I just want to make it more clear. Um, and then you have a place, right? And I said here, I want the comma separate the list of places that are provided in input. I'm using input here as the input indicator. But you know, I could also take this and put it right here um, as part of a as part of user, but I'll just keep it like this and then you can try the other version that I was testing. So you can see here that the place was, and it actually kept the indicator, which is good. You know, you could tell the model further that maybe you don't want this indicator as part of the output. That's something you can be more specific about and can instruct the model to output whoever you want the, the, the output. And so we can see that we can confirm that this is the right information that we were expecting from this particular uh, place extractor system. The other tip here is to avoid impreciseness, and this has to do with specificity as well. And the reason for that is because you want to, again, as I mentioned earlier, you want to avoid ambiguous language, right? Because you're, you're, all you're doing is you are confusing the models. So the, 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 the message has to be clear, the message has to be direct. Whatever instruction you're passing to the model has to be as direct. And that's how you're going to get the best results from the system. So I have some example here, explain the concept from engineering, keep the explanation short, only a few sentences, don't be too descriptive. Um, it, we're telling the model to do a lot of things here and we're not being too precise, right? So this is about being imprecise because you're, you're not telling it how much sentences you want. You say it's short, but what do you mean by short? You say, don't be too descriptive. What do we even mean by that? So we want to make it a lot simpler for the model to perform the task to get the desired results, right? So we want some level of customization in the output that we're getting. And so we need to be as precise as possible. So here is a better example uh, compared to the one above. Use two to three sentences to explain, to explain the concept of prompt engineering to a high school student. Now, that, I think this is a bit more clear because it, the target would be high school students, right? And I'm using things like two to three sentences to explain the concept, right? I could even go a little bit more detailed, but I think this is good enough as a first iteration that improves the preciseness of the prompt itself, right? The instruction here is a lot more precise. So here, this tip here is, is actually interesting. These models are trained to do, right? They're trained to do and to perform tasks, to perform instructions that users are giving it. So when you use language like do not ask for interest or anything like that, it's like you're communicating to a human, but in reality, these models might not be trained effectively to perform tasks where they're told not to do specific things. So you want to avoid language like that. What, what would work instead is to be, better guide the model or better steer the model, be more precise, and just follow the above tips that I shared. So something like this can be converted to something like, like this instead, um, where you're being a little bit more specific, right? You're telling the model what exactly you want the behavior to be, and you kind of explain the logic without using language I do not, right? So just do not use that do not um, language with the models because they tend to fail or they tend to, the models tend to kind of derail and give you really bad output that you may not desire. And the models are getting a lot better, right? So, so some modern models might be able to deal with these particular instructions a lot better, but I would say this is unnecessary, right? You don't really need to tell the model, do not ask for personal information as shown in this example. I think it's better if you tell the model specifically what you want in the behavior, right? Instead of telling it what to avoid. So the more specific you are about what the model should perform or the task should, it should perform, because it was trained to perform tasks, it makes sense to be more positive in, and, and be more direct and precise in what you want from the model. Okay, so those are kind of some best practices. Uh, there's also a link here that you can click on and it will take you to uh, 
the OpenAI official documentation where they have a little bit more um, on, on on some further tips. There are you know other tips that I might be missing here, but we continue to up, update the guide and provide better tips for all our developers and people that are using these large language models. So that will be it for this video. Hopefully it was useful and hopefully you can work on those examples and you can consider this when you're designing your prompts so that they can help you efficiently and effectively build your use cases with large language models. So I'll catch you in the next one. 